Hello everybody, welcome back to Shenmue 2. Man, that was a good nap. I feel very refreshed. I did actually just wake up for real. So I may be a little groggy, but you know, that's the price we pay. All right, let's get back out here into Kowloon, guys. I do want to stop off at those lucky hit stands and try one more time. Maybe two or three more times. <laughs> I did do what I said. I looked up some information on this stuff. I I talked to people. I looked at anecdotes. I watched some YouTube videos. There's not a real, like, super strict consensus about the best way to get these. Most people agree that you start on the far left on the first board and then the far right on the second board. The third board gets a little weird. But let's just see if I can make something happen here. Alright, so... Five bucks a pop really adds up too, guys. So, most people agree that you want to start on the far left. Some people say that you should actually come back over, like... 18 to 20 clicks back to the right, but it probably doesn't matter all that much. So, we're just gonna go to the far left and see if this works out. I mean, it kind of makes sense because all of the winning spots are on the... Yeah, okay. Alright, great. Ah, uh, This is supposed to be the easy part right here. <laughs> that's the thing that's terrible about this. This is the real ball busting. Like, <laughs> if you can't even get past the first fucking board, this whole thing is impossible. Far left. Alright, let's try it again. Yeah, you can see it's already taking a wildly different path than it did last time. Oh, oh, but look, I lose again. That's great. That's fucking awesome. The first YouTube video I watched, I don't even remember the guy's name. And, and I'm glad that I don't, because he's full of shit. He said that if you go to the far left on the first board, you're going to win like 100% of the time. At first he said 100%, and then he said like almost 100%. And I'm here to tell you, whoever you were, you're full of shit. That's utter bullshit. I'm proving it right here, right now. I've just lost... I've just lost three times in a row! Go into the far left. Holy shit! Okay, one more. One more. So this time... What we're gonna do... is go far left, and then we're gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20! Let's try this. If I had to do that every single time, I'm just gonna blow my brains out. Well, okay, well that worked a lot better. You probably don't have to be that precise with it. Just go to the far left and then come back out, like, a little bit. Okay. Then we'll try the far right on this board. This is supposed to be another 100%. Go to the far right. You'll get it every time. Let's see. I didn't have nearly that much trouble. Yeah, fuck me. Fuck me. Ah! I can't sleep on that. I can't do it. I have to get to the third board at least fucking one time. It's necessary. For my sanity. This is not how I wanted this video to start off, guys. <laughs> One, two, three, four. We're just gonna come out like right about there. I was really only gonna try this one time, but I, I figured I'd get to the third board easily and I would just give that a shot, you know? I didn't know this was gonna be such a thing. The other reason this is annoying is because that guy has to talk in between every single drop and you've got to select the option to keep going and he has to say his little speech. It's just, eh. It could be snappier. The fact that you have to do it so many times and the fact that it's such a pain in the ass. Okay, so don't go to the far sides. That's my experience here. Go to the far sides and then come back out just a little bit. Now for the third board... This is the one that's practically impossible. Most... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the things I read on it say that you want to move to the left anywhere between four to six notches. So I've heard six was the most successful for most people. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And some people claim that they've really won 
um, in just a couple rolls doing that, and then other people say that they had to go, you know, to like four or five. Um, that didn't work at all for me right there. Apparently, like, even when you employ that technique of moving it over, you know, four to six notches, you're still only going to win, like, maybe 3% of the time, is the figure that I heard. So it takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of determination, a lot of repetition. And again, I don't even know, like, if it's... It's, it's probably not considered worth it, according to most people. Because these Moose Scrolls, I'm sure they're cool, but they're super not necessary for anything, right? <laughs> like, you can still play the game without them. So, I don't know. I, I guess only crazy people really take the time to try and make that happen. And I am crazy enough to do it. I'm just probably not going to do it on camera, you know? I'll end up bringing you guys in. That'll be like the start of a video. I'll be like, oh my god, guys, check it out. I fucking did it. Can you believe it? Holy crap. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna let that be. We're gonna dive a little deeper into Kowloon here because we really only got this far last time. That's the Ghost Hall building. What is back here? This is probably another street fighting arena. Construction base, yeah. Let's check this out. I don't wanna spend too much time running around right now. I'd like to go to our next objective, but let's just let's do this once or twice. Let's see what this is about. ソトーランこそ勝利人70人への一冊鉄刀砲を極めた達人だあらゆる相手を頭突きの一撃で通してきたこの男と勝負する腕自慢はいないか影銀10ドルの一本勝負だ制限時間は60秒さあ我と思わ
I, I'm in the mood to mix up a little bit. Let's get something blue. Still no winning can. No love for the long couch in this video, guys. My luck stat is just very low today. Ooh. Okay, now that we're good and refreshed, let's run back here and see where these alleys lead to. This loops back around. Oh, so this is Cafe Anna back here. Um, I don't think there's really ever much to do here. Maybe a little bit later. Nothing really going on there right now. There's some more lucky hits. Wow, look at that. This one here is a $10 bet, and it has times 50 odds. And you actually have a little less than a 50% chance to win. That's not... That's not bad. <laughs> that's really not bad at all. You know what? I'm going to try that one time. Oh, perfect. Oh, this is a different kind of rule set, isn't it? You have to get all four of them. That makes sense. That's why the payout's so high. You know what? Actually, I guess this one's even higher because it's $20, but it's a bet of times 15. So, yeah. 50 times 8? That's not bad. Okay, so... This is interesting. I'll, let me try on this board here. This one is like exactly a 50% chance to get all four balls in there. And you you do have to win all four times, according to what he says, which makes sense. It's supposed to be a little tricky because those odds are so high. You're probably not going to win. Like I guess technically the odds are still against you if it's 50%, but you have to get four out of four. It seems that the best strategy for this board would be to definitely just stay to the right. Try and drop it like right between those two pins there so that it'll kind of bounce over. There's a nice kind of cascading wall of pins there that shoves it to the right, so that's actually really handy. Then it gets pushed back, then it bounces around the center. Oh, okay, nice, nice. So that's two, that's two. Let's go for number three here. If you can get them right between those two pins at the top, that's probably the best. Stay over there. See, right there, it pushes it back out. That's what's going to fuck it overall. Yep, yep, I figured. Nope. My funds are actually getting somewhat low. I gotta be a little careful. I gotta go make some real, like, guaranteed money. <laughs> Not this betting crap. Alright, so if we keep running back this way, where do we end up? The stand quarter. All right, this is a new area. And we're definitely going to want a map. Here we have the Yellowhead building. We're not going to be going in there for a, a little bit, guys. Let me pick up a map here. That's right, I'm kind of remembering now that the Yellowhead building is sort of like the center of the whole area, and I feel like most of the quarters kind of revolve around that building, because it's massive, and I think it has entrances in every quarter, which is something you would kind of come to realize the more you explore around. Over here is the Black Heaven building. Let's grab a map for this. I don't believe we have any need to go in there right now. There's E. There's E building. We're still missing A. Let's see what else we got here. Lots of stalls in this area. Probably not much. Stargazing points. That is going to be another street fight. I'm not going to go look at that right now. 
Moonchild building. We're definitely going to want a map of this place. Oh, I already have this one. Okay, good. So we got that. Small Dragon Garden. That is, I believe, another street fighting area. Blue Dragon Garden. Um, also another street fighting area, I believe. I don't know why this dude's, like, guarding it. I know. Okay, I think we actually can't get in there right now. No big deal. I didn't want to go in there anyway. The thing that makes Kowloon uh, kind of confusing to get around, I've mentioned this before, but I didn't mention specifically how a lot of these buildings are actually connected. So it kind of seems like we're actually boxed in here in this quarter. There's only one way in and one way out from what I can see in terms of running around outside. Especially if I look on the map, I think all of these entrances and exits are just buildings or street fighting arenas. And I apologize, you guys. As I've mentioned, I'm kind of like relearning this myself as I go. Uh, what about back here? Is this where I came from? Fighting place. Oh, you know what this is? <laughs> How about fuck you? Yeah, so if you're into arm wrestling, this place is actually kind of cool because the way it works is you don't have to work your way up to the hardest difficulties and the highest bets. You can actually start at any level you want. Um, I believe they're actually lined up in terms of difficulty already. And you may recognize some of these guys. Like that guy right there is the first guy that we ever arm wrestled. <laughs> uh, Jimenez Garcia. He's here in Kowloon as well. And uh, I guess the strongest guys are down here at the end. So like if you wrestle this guy here, if you arm wrestle that guy there, it's going to be like a level 5 difficulty with a high bet and it's going to be tricky. Um, not something I really need to concern myself with. I don't really enjoy the arm wrestling. But, yeah, it's there if you want to do it. Okay. Now we've exited into the dim sum quarter. Let me grab the map for this area. Hmm? The building we're looking for is the Dancing Dragon building. And most people, we could ask for directions, but I'm just kind of exploring on my own right now. We've got a big-ass lucky hit ring going on here. Ooh, $100 times five odds. I mean, pretty much any kind of bet that you could ask for, you'll find here in this, this little gambling ring they have going on. Um, over there is the Dim Sum building. Let's grab a map of this. I think this building will actually take us where we want to go. I think. And that's A building. Look at that, guys. We finally found the A building. Oh, man, I forgot. It's already later in the day because I started later in the day. <laughs> Nighttime. I actually wanted to get where we're going before the end of the day. I wanted to start the next sequence, so I should probably get a move on. Let me just take a look back down here. We've got the Nihao Tea House. I like the rhyming of that name. Everyone's restaurants. We got some paths down that way, which are probably more street fights, I think. I actually have no idea what's down here. My curiosity is getting the better of me. Let's take a look. Old government office site. Yeah, this is a gambling den. Okay. We've got roll it on top. That's a max bet of a thousand right there. Oh, this isn't rolling on top. This is uh What is this? This might be a new kind of gambling game, actually. Let me talk to this guy. No, not you. Shut up. 
<笑>お兄ちゃんよく来たねちょっと聞きたいんだおいやギャンブルすんじゃねえのあ,あじゃああっち行った行った俺お金使わない人には用事ないよ<笑>そうかわかった I see he says OK さあ差しで勝負じゃ大将で儲けたいやつはやってる Oh this is just big or small やってかんか For some reason it looked a little different to me Let's, let's play one game あ,あやろうよっしゃほんでいくらかけるんじゃ Let's see, I don't really have a ton of cash. I'm just gonna bet, uh. <laughs> I'm gonna bet the minimum, which is 100. Alright. Why sick? Oh, this does have some different rules. Yeah, okay. So this is big or small, but it's a new version of big or small, and I don't actually know the rules on this one. Uh, I'll just vote on big. I thought it looked different. Come on, baby, come on. Oh, I think I did it. Yay. Lucky. What are the actual rules to this? Okay. ジュイチジョウはダイ。三つの数字が揃ってれば、ホーツ。もう一つ一点統一は、お主の選んだ数でサイコロの目が二つ揃えば勝ちじゃ。ま、三つ揃っても勝ちじゃがんの。大と小は
This leads us to the Dim Sung building. There is a slot house here if you want to play slots. I might do that a little later just because I still have some tokens left over and I know that they'll transfer. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and not do that. Alright, so we finally made it to the Dancing Dragon building. It took a little longer than I expected, but um, I guess we have to access it from this building? I honestly didn't remember that there was no outside entrance, but I guess there's not. Uh, this place has a lot of fortune tellers, if that's your thing. I don't really care to do that right now. Back this way is another fortune teller. And, uh, yeah, that's really all this place is. Right here is the man in black. Two of them, actually. I know. Mm hmm. None that. Okay, so the password was turtles. Kamewa. Nope. <laughs> gibberish. It's gibberish. Mm hmm. None that. The actual password was dragons. Don't sleep. Thank you, Man in Black. Thank you for keeping us safe from the aliens. I appreciate it. This guy's probably going to stop us. Yeah, I think that's where we're actually trying to get to. Will this guy let me just run past? Nice. Yeah, we don't have to stop and talk to every man in black because there's only one way forward right now. Okay, so we're on 2F. So this is a part of the game where I kind of wanted to talk about some of the way that this game was developed. I talked about how, like, there's a lot of rooms in a lot of these buildings that don't actually have anything in them. And we can see that starting here in this building. If we jump in here... These rooms are like fully furnished and decorated, but there's actually not really anything going on in any of them. I don't know why we're allowed to just walk into all of them, because presumably people live in these rooms, but they're never here and they leave their doors unlocked. Well, I think sometimes you will encounter somebody. Um, very rarely though, you'll knock, you'll knock on a door and somebody will be like, what do you want? You're making too much noise, go away. And you know, that's the end of it. Um, the thing that's actually interesting about these rooms, guys, is that the way they developed all of these rooms was by utilizing a system they created called the Magic Room System. You guys remember how I talked about how the first game had the Magic Weather System? And they named it that because it was the first of its kind like that. Um, the fact that it had, like, random weather that actually, you know, made sense in the world and affected, you know, the, the look of the world and the, uh the skybox for that day and everything. Um, well, they had a similar concept for this. Um, really, the only interesting thing that I know about in this building is this creepy-ass Annabelle doll in this room. Uh, you gotta be careful here, because if you spend too much time in this room, that doll will eat your soul, and you'll be stuck in hell forever. So, yeah. Um, that always creeped me the hell out. <laughs> but that's the only thing I know about in any of these rooms that's actually, like kind of interesting or unique. Um, so the magic room system was a thing that they developed. Oh, are we going to get somebody here? Here we are. Alright. Sorry about that, lady. So, the magic room system is basically this thing they developed where instead of actually modeling all these rooms themselves, like creating the layout of them... Oh wow, I can't actually enter there? Uh, what they did was they... They made all these objects that you would find in a room like this, and then they created basically what they called an AI that actually filled out all these rooms in like a random generation. Now, they're not actually random in the game. Like, they are what they are. They're always going to be that way. But instead of actually, like, making the layout of the room themselves and, you know, making these objects, they made all the objects, and then they basically made a formula that filled in the rooms in a way that made sense, right? 
Um, they programmed it so that, like, you know, it wouldn't be obstructing your ability to walk through the room. And they tried to program it in such a way that it kind of made sense from a room layout perspective. But they didn't actually place all these objects themselves individually. It was done by an AI, which is kind of crazy to think about. And, it, like I said, it doesn't really lead to a lot, honestly, because... It's just one of those weird things where, like, there's a really unnecessary level of detail in Shenmue that doesn't actually provide you with anything other than a lot of chances to actually explore if you want to. So, that's the magic room system. Now, up here on this floor, I believe it's somewhere up here. This is the one thing I was actually going to show you. Because I didn't realize that this, uh... This gambling game existed outside of here, too. But there's a gambling spot right here, and it's a new kind of game that we haven't seen yet, so let's... Let's check it out here. Alright. Flower, bird, wind, and moon. I don't need to see the rules for this, because... It's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's just do 10 bucks. Your chances of winning on this one aren't super high. You basically have a 1 in 4 chance. Because it's basically kind of like a weird ro uh, roulette game. I don't even know which one I'm picking here. Y you're picking between flower, bird, wind, and moon. I'm just going to pick this one here. And then he spins this marble around the bowl, and if it lands on the one that you picked, you win. Yeah. I'm good. So that's that minigame. It's not really anything super crazy or amazing, but it's there if you want to do it. <laughs> Alright, and we don't really want to be leaving the Dancing Dragon building, so we're going to double back and keep going up the stairs here. It can be a little tricky to find your way around this area because you're not 100% sure where you're actually going. And sometimes the stairs will be gated off or different hallways will be gated off. We can talk to these dudes in the black suit to figure out exactly where we're supposed to be going. I'm just going to kind of run around. Up here is Mahjong Parlor Big Three Dragons. So I don't know if there's any actual gambling up in here. I think it's really just bars that you can come and hang out at. Yeah. I don't think there's ever actually anything really going on here, though. It's just, uh, <laughs> again, kind of an area that's filled in and populated. There's lots of NPCs to talk to, but never anything to really do there. So I'm just going to ignore all that because it's actually starting to get kind of late. And I'm starting to get a little worried that I'm not going to get to where I wanted to go by the time I'm done here <laughs> before the day ends. At some point, we need to be able to head down a certain hallway, I believe. I don't remember exactly where we're going. I'm just going to keep going up and up and up. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. That's a, that's a dead end we've reached right there. If we come down this way... Hmm. We may have to go back down, actually. Yeah, because that leads to the Dim Sung building... And that's not where we want to go. You see how these hallways and doorways all just really look the same? That's why uh, they can be a little bit confusing if you don't know where you're going. Let's go back and talk to the last man in black that we saw on the stairwell. He'll tell us where we need to go. Where is that fool? I have F. Did I miss somebody already? Hey, you. Tell me where to go. Ah, the third floor. 
3階に降りろ。わかった。Okay, thanks, buddy. For some reason, I thought we were going higher than that. But that actually simplifies matters. Third floor. I know. This dude looks like he's straight out of Pulp Fiction. He's wearing a Bluetooth headset, even though it's like 1987. Ah. That's why I thought we were going higher, because we are going higher. It was just in the wrong stairwell. That's what I get for not talking to these guys. Alright. We'll head up to the seventh floor from here. I'm really grateful it doesn't make you. Damn it. I was just about to say, I'm really grateful it doesn't make you talk to all these guys. <laughs> And now I have to talk to him. That's what I was doing until you interrupted me. Jerk. We're cutting it pretty close here, guys. It's almost 11 o'clock. This dude has awesome hair. It's a lot like mine. We made it, guys! The room with the dragon door. Here we go. This place looks important. Um, seems I blundered into yet another trap. My hero. Yeah, get him, Ren. Get him. Uh, that's not working out so great for you. Very uncool. Three days later, guys. Sorry, Ren.
I actually really love this part of the game, guys. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> A lot of these QTEs that you... A lot of these QTEs are so funny if you miss them. It's almost like a buddy cop movie. Like the early part of the movie. Where they're not really friends yet. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ガキがやらそうなくて聞くな。やるのせいで。くそガキか。もうダメだ。なんだ。出る。よせ。まだ奴らが。バカ野郎、勝負ね。勝負。あのな。大学。どうする。強行突破だ。よし。行くぞ。ほら。行くぞ。ナイスリーダン。よし、こっちだ。おい、俺様の言う通りに走るんだ。こっちだ。Sorry, <笑> what? Oh, oh. Kuro, but I wanted to go first. Sorry, Ren. よっしゃ、行くぞ。どうした。おい、今何事がしたんだ。おい、ドアが壊されてるぞ。この辺にいるはずだ。探せ。Lucky. Oh, 
Man, I just love the dynamic between these two. And Ren's voice acting is just superb. I love his voice actor, guys. Oh, the Big Dipper, huh? Interesting. てめえとは無関わらねえ。もう主軍たつも金もいらねえ。あだうちはてめえで勝手にやりな。最初からそのつもりだ。大体てめえの敵ってのはどこのドイツなんだよ。ランテーだ。ランテー。ランテー。死
Retry. Idiot. Wong, let's go. Wong, I'm going to do it. Go it. So, hard to say. Wong, no, can't hold it. No, the pro queue. Da. Aya, go. Hey. I didn't know that about Wong, but that seems like a very useful skill. <laughs> Dang. Ren did Wong kind of dirty there. But you know what? I'm glad he's back in the story. I thought we left him behind forever. It's not my fault you vanished. Yeah. Oh. 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 Sorry, Joy. Alright, Ren, you lead the way. Yeah, so that's why you can't actually say goodbye to Joy. Because it would ruin that cutscene right there where she yells at you for not saying goodbye to her. So no matter how hard you try, you'll never actually find her on the last day that you leave Wanchai. So, Also, I'm kind of surprised that like Wong had to be the person to come and pick those handcuff locks. I mean, I, I'm sure that there's got to be other people Ren knows who could do it, right? Even if Wong's the best at it, I mean, it's still just one pair of handcuffs. There's got to be somebody who could get it done, even if it took him a little longer, right? So I guess, I don't know, that was their story justification for bringing Wong into Kowloon, but 
whatever, I'm not complaining, I'm just happy that it happens. And also guys, I want to point out something. We had a little reference to uh, the Big Dipper there, it showed up in that cutscene, which I find really interesting because if you guys remember the cutscene we got way back in Shenmue 1 when we visited the Rusia China shop and talked to the old lady there, and she gave us a little bit of the history of the Dragon Mirror shortly after we found it. The Big Dipper showed up in that cutscene as well, and you may remember that's one of the reasons that I asked you to remember that cutscene. Uh, just one of the reasons. But that's the second time that uh, the Big Dipper has been referenced in Shenmue. And it just kind of makes you realize there's got to be something to that, right? But yeah, we'll have a, a little bit more on that later. That's not the only reason I asked you to remember that cutscene, so... All right, where's this Yang douchebag? I really want to make him pay, because he sold us out to Don Yu, that big, bald, muscular douchebag. Like, equal parts muscular and fat, right? Kind of like the Kingpin. <laughs> That's just who he reminds me of. I do that. Ah. Yeah. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. <laughs> Allow me, buddy. I've got some experience in these matters. Hello. <laughs> Brent's so convinced that there's money involved in this whole thing, and there's never been any evidence of that. But if it keeps him on my side, I'm cool. Kono Ibashua Yamucharo da Yamucharo Koko de de Miginite Kono Biru no Urani Mare Sakaba Niken da Randeru Soro Mejirishini Sagashina. Wow, that was a lot that just went down, guys. So let's see. Might be some info in Huang's room. He is the wiretapper. T Break Building 902. So that's going to be our next destination. I think this is probably a good spot to call this video for now. I think in the intervening time, guys, I'm probably going to do a little bit of gambling to make a little bit of money and maybe make some more efforts on the Lucky Hit move scroll stands just to see if I can get lucky in that regard. And uh, don't worry, I'm still going to be showing you guys the different street fights and stuff that are around here because we haven't looked at the vast majority of them yet and I want to show off most of them. So... Yeah, that's going to be the roadmap going forward. All right, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy Shenmue 2 HD with the long couch. And, uh, hey, I will catch you guys in the next video. You guys take care.